Welcome back. So, we now find ourselves ready to look at the weak form of the linear elliptic PDE for scalar for a scalar unknown in three dimensions. Okay, so um, let's just state the weak form and 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 move on with it, right? Because we've written the strong form in at least a couple of times in in different ways. So. All right, here is the weak form of the problem. Okay, I'm going to first state it and then obtain it. Right? So, um, find u belonging to S, right, where S is equal to the space of functions, right, equal to some functions u, such that u at uh, u equals u g on the Dirichlet boundary. Okay, so find u in the space from the space uh, given everything else, right? Obviously, we're given g u g. We're given j sub n, right? We'll be given the data f uh, and. the constitutive relation our constitutive relation now is um, j sub i equals minus kappa i j u sub j okay given all this right Find u such that such that for all w belonging to v, where v consists of uh, the space v consists of uh, uh, holds functions w, where w again, just as we saw before for the waiting function, vanishes on the Dirichlet boundary. Okay, find u belonging to S given the data such that for all w belonging to v, the following condition is satisfied. Integral over omega w comma i j i d v okay equals integral over omega w f d v okay minus integral over omega, sorry, integral over omega sub j w times j n d s. Okay, some things to note here. So, so this is it, this is our weak form. Okay, some things to note here are that um, we have here the elemental volume dv and ds here is the elemental surface area okay that should be clear because omega of course is a uh, subset of three dimensional space it's a volume in 3d and therefore its boundary partial omega sub j that subset of its boundary is indeed a uh, surface right okay so that's the situation we have right so <clears throat> dv is the elemental volume that that allows us to integrate over the over this entire volume and ds is every little elemental surface area okay so uh, this is the weak form um, what i'm going to do now is um, 
get us to it, right? I'm going to show, show you how the weak form is obtained, right? As before, we are going to take, uh, we're going to take one of the approaches that we took before, uh, which is to start out with the strong form, which we've already put down, and um, get to the weak form, okay? So uh, here's how we do it, right? So we start out by considering, consider the strong form. Okay, we have the usual stuff, right? So we have find u given all the data and um, I'm just going to put down the constitutive relation here directly without calling it a constitutive relation. Right, so given all this stuff, find u such that, st is short form for such that, um, we have minus j i comma i equals f in omega, right? And because I'm a little short of space here, but I want to have it all on this slide, I'm going to put down the boundary conditions here. the Richley boundary condition and our Neumann boundary condition. Okay, this is what we have. Now, uh, the approach we're going to take is the one that we took uh, formally, the, the approach that we took in uh, obtaining the weak form from the strong form for the 1D problem, okay? Right? So what we have is we have the strong form. What we're going to say is uh, consider W belonging to V, right? Where V, of course, is, is the, uh, has the properties that we stated before. It consists of all functions that satisfy the homogeneous Dirichlet boundary condition, right? That's what that is, okay? Now, uh, just as we did for the 1D problem, what do we do here? Do you recall? That's right. We multiply the PDE of the strong form by W, and we integrate by parts, right? So. Uh, multiply PDE, right, the strong form, uh, strong form, SF being short form for strong form of PDE, okay, but multiply the, PDE, uh, the strong form of the PDE by W, right, and then we integrate by parts. Okay, that's what we do. So let's do it in steps, right? First, let's multiply the PDE and uh, integrate it over the volume, and then we'll invoke integration by parts, okay? So in integrating it by multiplying it by W and, and integrating over the volume, we have this integral over omega um, minus W J I comma I dV, right? We took the minus divergence on the left-hand side and multiplied it by W. Okay, and this is equal to uh, integral on the right-hand side, integral over omega, W, F, dV. Okay, what we've done here is um, multiply uh, the PDE by W and integrate over the volume. Okay, we're now going to do integration by parts, and if you recall the uh, application of integration by parts on functions in three dimensions, Right, where, where the integration is happening in three dimensions. Um, we, of course, uh, do that uh, to the 
left hand side term, right? So, this is the one that we are going to integrate by parts. Now, when we did this in the 1D problem, I did mention, I think, that uh, integration by parts is really nothing other than uh, an application of the product rule of differentiation combined with the uh, divergence theorem, okay? Uh, that's, that indeed holds in, in multiple dimensions as well. And to bring, uh, it's useful to bring that out because it makes very clear what, uh, how, how the integration by parts proceeds. So we'll do that, okay? So we call here that when we say integration by parts, what we're talking about is doing is the product rule and uh, divergence theorem. Okay? Firstly, the product rule tells us the following, right? It tells us that uh, we really need to look at W multiplied by J I comma I as being just one term in applying the product rule of differentiation. Right? So it tells us that that really is integral over omega uh, W J I, the whole thing comma I, and we should make sure not to forget our signs, right? This plus W comma I J I. Okay? So if you expand out the first uh, term in the integrand, you will see that it can, that one of the terms it produces because of the product rule cancels out the second term, right? And we're left with what we had in the first line. Okay. So this is equal to integral over omega W F dV. Okay. But then when we stare at our uh, left-hand side integral, we realize that we can actually view W j i as essentially a vector, which it is, right? Because j is a vector, right? So um, this is a vector, right? Component i. And um, that term is essentially the divergence of w j. And there we invoke the divergence theorem, okay? Right? So this step is really just the product rule. When we do the divergence theorem, we get the following, right? Uh, the divergence theorem tells us that this integral over omega is really an integral over the, over the boundary of omega, okay? Uh, minus integral over the boundary of omega of W J I N I, right? Where N I is, of course, our unit outward normal, something that we'd uh, observed in one of the previous segments, right? It's this integrated over the surface of the body plus the next term remains a um, volume integral. And the right hand side stays the same. Okay? And what, how we get this is through the divergence theorem. Okay? What we are going to do next is take this surface integral, sorry, take this surface integral over to the right hand side. When we do that, we get integral over omega w comma i j i dv equals integral over omega w f dv plus. Now, that integral over the entire surface partial omega, I'm going to break up to integrals over each of the two subsets we've identified for the boundary, right? 
And those subsets, you recall, are the following. One of them is the Dirichlet boundary, partial omega u, right? And so here we have w, j, i, n, i, ds, plus integral over the Neumann boundary, w, j, i, n, i, ds. Okay, now let's stare at the last two boundary integrals. What can we say about the first one? What can we say about the first integral? Think about it. It's over the Dirichlet boundary. It's W, J, I, N, I, D, S. Right, we can say that over the Dirichlet boundary, because W, we are picking to live in the space V, which satisfies homogeneous Dirichlet boundary conditions. We have that, right? So that first term, that first integral drops out. What about the second integral? We're starting with a strong form, which includes the boundary conditions explicitly, right? And in particular, the way we wrote out the boundary conditions, uh, we specified that the heat influx vector, which is minus, it's not the heat influx vector, the heat influx minus j i n i on the boundary, right, on the Neumann boundary, is uh, heat influx if you're talking of the heat conduction problem, right? Mass influx if you're talking mass diffusion. Anyway, j i n i we identified as being minus j sub n. Okay. So when we put these things together, we arrive at um, the form that I had put down originally, right? I think at the top of the previous slide. Integral over omega w comma i j i d v equals integral over omega w f d v, okay? minus integral over the Neumann boundary W J sub N ds. Okay? This was the, what I posed originally as the weak form. Okay? And so we've got there, right? We've obtained it from the strong form. Right? Now, uh, in the case of the 1D problem, we also went the other way, right? We demonstrated that the weak form and the strong form are completely equivalent. And indeed, that holds in, in this case too, right? It holds for actually every problem, right? If you, the strong form and the weak form of any PDE are completely equivalent, all right? And uh, we can adopt the same approach in proving it in this case as well. So we could start out with this weak form. Um, we would have assumed the space V. We would be given the data. Uh, we would essentially do integration by parts in reverse, and then we would go through the tricky business of invoking those um, variational arguments, right, on how the, on, on, on the manner in which W can be chosen, right, or, or, or the very fact that W has to hold for, for, for all functions living in V allows us to sta state that it also holds for certain spe special functions, okay, and that is what would bring us to the strong form. Um, we're not going to go through that argument here. It holds. You can try it on your own if you like, uh, but it, uh, it's not um, crucial for what we want to do, which is, of course, to work with the weak form. Okay? So we're just going to stop here as far as deriving the weak form is concerned. Uh, let me also uh, make a remark. Let me just state here. Actually, it's more than a remark, so I'm going to state it in sort of the main text, so to speak, uh, which is to say that the weak form... What we've demonstrated is that the weak form is implied by the strong form, right? This is, this is, this is what we've just demonstrated in the, in the little derivation we did. Okay, one can prove also that the other direction holds. Okay, it's not difficult. You can just follow the notes that, and, and follow the steps we took in the 1D case. Okay, we're not going to show this. this uh, we're not going to show the right-hand side implication. We demonstrated the left-hand side implication. Okay. Um, well, this is it, right? So, so this, is, this is our weak form, and this is what we're going to work off to, to develop the finite element method. Um, 
That will, uh, however, be best done in a different segment. Before we end this segment, there's just one remark I want to make, which is um, actually um, applicable to the to the strong form. Okay, um, just a remark I want to make here, which is that if you look at um, recall the PDE of the strong form. PDE of strong form, recall the PDE of strong, the strong form, right, which is uh, minus J I comma I equals F, right, or in, uh, in uh, direct notation it is minus del dot J equals F, right, in omega. I just want to recall for us the interpretation here. Now, you know that if we take this body uh, and we uh, look at the PDE that we have, the PDE really holds pointwise, right? So it holds over every little infinitesimal volume in this, um, over this domain, right? So if you were to go inside, cut it open and take a little volume, that PDE, uh, the, the strong form of the PDE holds over that little infinitesimal volume, okay? And what I ju just want to do is to recall for us here the interpretation of the minus divergence, right? Uh, in this, in this, uh, in the setting in 3D, the minus, the, the, the divergence itself, of a vector, is the, is the total net outflux over that little volume, okay? So the negative divergence is the total, uh, is, is the net influx into that little volume. And all this PDE is saying in strong form is that the net influx into every little infinitesimal volume is driven by what we recognize to be a source term, okay? So let me just uh, do that little, uh, make that little argument here, all right? So if we have our, this is, this is our body omega, what we're talking of doing here is considering a little volume element okay and um, we are the, the net influx is uh, is obtained from you know by considering with, with this little pillbox type argument which is sometimes presented uh, often in the context of classical, fluid mechanics and sometimes maybe also in the context of um, heat conduction, right? So this is the net influx, right? So, so this net influx here is denoted by minus divergence of J, okay? So what we're saying is the net influx, right, over a little volume equals the source term. Right, or minus del dot j equals the source term, which is f, right, at every point in omega, right? So that little pillbox there represents a point in omega, right? So we may choose to say that, okay, that has the position vector x, right? So the point out there it has the position vector x, that, that little pillbox has been constructed about that point x, okay? All right. I uh, just wanted to recall this uh, argument, uh, this this interpretation, because I um, omitted to mention it. Okay. So we're done with the segment. What we've done very quickly, actually, is uh, get to the weak form. When we return, you know how this is going to proceed. We are going to set up the finite dimensional weak form. We're going to first observe that this is the infinite dimensional weak form. We'll set up the finite dimensional weak form and um, develop our finite element methods. All right. We'll stop.